Um, so yep. thank you very much for making it tonight. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, and it's always cool to discuss anything surfing for myself. So really happy to share that with you all tonight. Uh, the purpose of our workshop is to just help us understand more about for surf forecasting and also what we want to look out for when we go surfing, what we want to see in the weather, what will help us identify the good and maybe the not so good days to surf. Um, I want to just also acknowledge that limitations uh, of my own knowledge uh, exist and kind of with everyone, surf forecasting can take years or in, in, in fact someone's entire lifetime to really study and understand you know people spend their whole career working on this concept in this world so um, some questions you might pose I might even get stumped myself like it did last session so um, you know there's lots out there and we can bounce it off each other and if someone has maybe a bit of an opinion about something feel free to shout that's all good that's why we've got this group here uh, tonight uh, so Without further ado, we'll get into it. Uh, when we're looking at um, waves and surfing waves, uh, there are four main points that affect our surf and the waves at a beach. So we've got the swell, we've got the wind, we have our tide, and we also look at the sea floor. So the bathymetry or the, um, the type of beach or the location that the waves are breaking in. Okay, so when we're looking at the waves, those four things are the, pretty much the key and the main factors into what uh, determines a good and a bad wave. So we'll begin with swell. I had always wondered when I started surfing uh, where waves came from. And when we talk about swell, swell is a, well, waves moving through the ocean that has been generated hundreds of kilometers out to sea, okay? So when we're looking at ourselves here in, uh, well, Victoria and, you know, south is the southern part of Australia and maybe also Western Australia. The winds that blow along the Antarctic here in the polar regions, when a great storm or, you know, wind trough happens and blows in the same direction, it is known as what's it's called a fetch zone. So our fetch zone is what I've sort of circled and drawn arrows for, is roughly in that area. And of course, changes in different directions, but more or less is in this area. So when we have a lot of storms and wind blowing in one direction, it is known as like a fetch and it creates the swell lines and the waves hundreds of kilometers away before they arrive at our beach. So when the waves are being generated, they come in sets or distances um, between each wave. You've probably noticed on some days, sometimes waves will break really close to each other. Sometimes there's large distances between each wave as well. And this is called the swell period. Um, it is a number that is, well, the swell period is measured in seconds. And I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit um, later on when we're you know, having um, our Q and A. Um, but it is a general rule of thumb. A swell period is better when the number is higher. Okay, so a more organized waves is when there's more distance between each wave. So when we're seeing a swell period of about 10 seconds or so and up, that's pretty good. If we're seeing 15, 16 seconds plus, then I promise you, well, it's a good day to break a promise and go surfing, okay? Because that's gonna generate really clean and really powerful waves, okay? So swell period and also the swell height, which is probably what you've seen in the surf forecasts, is a measurement of, of course, how tall and how powerful the waves are. Um, so those are kind of the two main factors that we look at with swell. Uh, it can get, of course, far more complicated. Um, there's also something um, known as secondary swell and tertiary swell even, when you've got maybe one swell and then you've got maybe another swell of waves coming you know at different directions or a different height and things that can interfere the swell um, i'm not going to go into detail or anything about that i just want to make you guys aware that it is a thing and something that you can look into uh, yourselves perhaps i don't want to go into too much detail and make it too complicated right now just want to go through sort of like the, the bulk of um surf forecasting so that's more or less what we look at when we um are looking at swell so uh, the next thing is wind. So wind tends to have the most immediate, maybe the most obvious effect on the ocean and also the waves that we surf. Uh, you guys out there like Sally, you know, today you clearly would have seen the difference in the ocean um, from this, that, that 
storm front that came through today. So uh, usually has the most local and obvious effect on the surface of the water when we're looking out into the surf. Uh, essentially, we want to have light winds or as little wind as we want locally in the spot that we're surfing. Uh, also, we have the direction of the wind that matters. And when we refer to this, we've got, well, more or less three terms. terms. We've got onshore wind conditions, offshore wind conditions, and well, some people like to say cross shore as well. So let's say we're standing at Smith's Beach just here and we're looking south. So if the wind is coming from the south and blowing into our face, then that's onshore. And that's conditions we don't really want to have so much. It creates a lot of chop in the waves. It makes the ocean really messy and the waves won't break as cleanly. So offshore is not as ideal. But let's say if the wind was coming from the north, so it's blowing from our backs out to sea and out towards the waves, then that's offshore. And that's a far better conditions that we want. Um, means that the wind hasn't got as much of effect on the local area. Um, and doesn't really chop up the ocean as much. So those are the, those are the wind conditions we're after. We also refer to cross shore. So let's say the wind came from the east or the west, and um, it's kind of like in the middle. You know, it can be good, can be bad. You know, it it it's a bit more finicky to say for certain. But if it's a light cross uh, cross shore wind, then you know we're not too worried about it. Uh, so those are the terms of that clears it up for anyone on the different directions and you know You've probably heard us throw those words around a lot when we're looking at the waves uh, Also um, Thing to keep in mind a lot of surfers like heading out in the morning for a surf uh, and that can also be um, due to the the heat of the Sun not really warming up the land and creating local air pockets and fluctuations so you know, let's say if the sun, if it's still morning, the land is cooler and there's not much differentiation between cold ocean and the, the land and therefore doesn't really create much sea breeze or any drafts you see. So um, it's just like, it's something to keep in mind. It tends to be why the morning often produces good surf. Um, and also the last thing is local area affects the wind, um, well, affects the wind direction and also the severity of the wind at our beach break. So um, this is a very, 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 very specific example, but we've got YCW Beach here, uh, just a water drawing here of YCW Beach. And we've got that large um, hill, you know, that bluff at the land on the corner. And this can help protect the beach from, let's say, you know, a westerly cross shore wind and make maybe this pocket here of the beach a little bit more calmer and the waves to break a bit cleaner. So we need to think of the local geography of the places we surf and think about where the wind comes from and how it might affect the beach. Say there's a valley, sometimes the wind can get funneled into that valley and then sort of be more directed to a spot. Sometimes a big bluff or a large headland or maybe even a mountain can cause the wind to hit the mountain and sort of wrap around and change its direction. So those are all things we need to keep in mind when we're looking at the wind direction and how it would affect the local break that we wish to surf at. Uh, more or less, that's wind. So uh, I'm not sure if anyone's got any questions. Otherwise, I'll keep going. Uh, the next area is tides. So um, obviously, the tides are the tides are caused through um, well, mostly um, the moon's gravitational pull on the Earth. So Every day we have usually two high tides and two low tides. And this is just a little diagram to help explain why that's the case and also tides in general. When the moon's directly above the surface, so say we're you know, directly under the moon, uh, we've got a high tide in that location. And uh, not, not to make it too complicated, at the same time on the other side of the earth, we also have a high tide. So this is what causes the highs on each side of the world. And then on the opposite sides, we've got the low and low tide there, okay? As the world rotates, uh, well, the earth rotates, sorry, uh, over a 24 hour period, this, the moon is gonna imagine it's staying stationary. And then we get our low tide, our high tide, we'll keep rotating, we'll get another low tide and then back to a high tide. So that's what creates the four, you could say a high, low, high, and then low tide in the day. Um, and helps to sort of maybe visualize that. I hope that sort of explains it. 
Uh, you could think of the tides almost as like a giant wave that kind of travels around the world, you know, and does one, you know, complete cycle every day. It's kind of a cool thought, you know, because it's the ocean rising and as like one huge mass of water moving around the world. So pretty cool when you kind of break it down like that. Uh, lucky last, every day um, in those high tides and low tides, you might hear sometimes someone will throw out the term, oh, it was a low, low tide or uh, it was the high, high. And that's because throughout the day, one of the high tides, um, one of the two high tides every day will be a little higher than the other one. And that's the same for the low tides. So of the two low tides in one day, one of them will be a little bit more lower than the other. Okay. so. Um, you can look at when you're looking at for surf forecasting or uh, well tide charts. I mean to say, you'll see depth so in meters the height of each tide. So you can sort of once you start kind of getting a bit more into surf forecasting and and trying to really you know work out waves and things. If you're journaling or maybe like keeping a record of what day worked, what day didn't work so well, and you're keeping those maybe numbers in a, in a book or something, you'll start to really hone in and maybe start working out what works well for you and everything. Um, a big sort of, um, not complaint, but question that comes up is a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, I looked at the surf forecast and it was saying, you know, like five star day, like a perfect day. And I went down there and it wasn't really good. And surf forecasting websites and, you know, um, these sources are trying to use a very better approach to surf forecasting to make it as simple for its audience to see. But in doing so, it doesn't really nail down the, car, the, the specific conditions to your beach that you want to surf at. So, it might cater for one specific area, but it doesn't really help in every beach scenario. So you gotta always have to take what you see, the raw data of books of the surf forecast and apply it to the beach that you wanna surf at. When you start doing this, you will really see a massive um, improvement in the waves that you, you'll probably start finding and, and the, the surfing uh, days that you sort of, um, yeah, that you find. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that, sort of makes sense. Uh, lucky last of the four things was sea floor, also known as uh, bathymetry, the study of the ocean floor. Um, this also has a very direct and sometimes sometimes obvious effect on the wave. So when we're looking at a beach, a bank is where we can see the beach, where the wave is going to break. Same with rocks or reefs. Um, and also the rate at which the ocean floor rises will affect the power of the breaking wave. So just as an example, I'm sure many of us have surfed Shelley's. Um, if we're looking at Shelley's beach, it's a very, very gradual um, ocean floor that rises up to the beach. And in doing so, the wave that comes sort of starts breaking and crumbling on the top as it sort of breaks up along towards the beach. But if we're looking at something, um, uh, I don't know, something a bit more wedgy. Uh, if if you guys know Express Point or something, maybe maybe even Surface Point or so, where you've got a ledge or a almost immediate rise in the ocean, it means the wave will come and just lip and break immediately onto that rock and create, you know, more of a tube powerful wave. So those are the local ocean bottom things we need to keep in mind of when we're um, yeah looking to catch the wave. So also the type of surfing you want to do, what surfboard you got, what um, your ability is and all and so on, are, you know, a whole factor that you'll start learning and improving on to make your surf experience more fun because going off the website and just going off, oh, that looks like a good day because the website said so, doesn't really apply to all of us and the way we want to surf and our ability and, and so on. So when you start really looking into the forecast, taking notes, observing, seeing what works for you and how to interpret take the starter is gonna make your surf experience way better. So um, in terms of just the content, it's about it. Um, if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. That's usually where the bulk of the conversation is and where a lot of information gets passed around. So- um, Yeah, I got a question. Yeah, yeah go for it. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but um, uh, would, would Flynn's count as a wedgie wave? Um, well, yeah, yeah, you could say so. Flynn's is, um, 
got the rock, like the, the lip, the, the ledge there, the reef, it does appear quite quickly on the bottom. So if you're especially surfing on the real inside of Flynn's, the wave there is quite powerful and, you know, it can break and just, you know, land on very shallow water. So yeah, I, I, I don't know if wedgie might be a bit of a bit hard to say, but it's definitely, you know, a, uh, like a point break or, or you could even say a reef break really, because it's breaking over those rocks. And if you surf there, you probably know there's a few rocks that almost stick out of the water in like in that middle time of the tide. So, um, yeah, if yeah, that answers your question. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Ed. yeah I want to say like, we can broke in, in parts in two parts that, uh, situation we can say, we have a, like a, a slabs where it is a, like a waves come from the deep ocean and just like a, hit the edge and uh, have a, that restriction. They don't, they, the mass of the water come and they don't have anywhere to transit anymore. So they hit and they growing up, you know, that is like a, a kind of a, a what Daniel try to um, say. Uh, in terms of uh, edging, the, the, the action is a little bit more ra uh, radical and uh, the, 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 the answer of the wave is like a big barrel, you know, uh, the wave is coming a little bit more stiff and uh, um, um, yeah. And uh, we have the edges like a little bit more gentle edges, like it's, it's the same of uh, you'd say flings, for example, um, Right point is another example. Uh, even shellies, okay, the wave coming and we have a, like a kind of a little steps. You always, you have a little step in one wave on top of the other. And then that can be the same kind of a principle. It's just the answer of the, the wave the, in Hawaii they call juicy, is that the emotion, okay? The wave, the, when the wave come and broken, that's the juice. Uh, can be different, it depends of the bottle, uh, Tom. And I just want to say, Daniel, <laughs> I'm impressed. You prepare yourself very well. Well done. <laughs> uh, thank you. That was very good. Um, yeah, I, I also very have, happy. Um, I can, we'll, we'll still, if anyone has questions, we'll go through them. But um, I, if, if not, um, after the questions, I'll show maybe one or two forecasts on my screen and we can just sort of like go through them because a um, very common question I got last time was people, um, they sort of understood the, the, the theory, but they had a hard time reading the website and actually understanding, like, what does this line mean? What does it mean if it's here or here? Like, so I'll maybe show one or two examples as well um, in a moment. So, yeah. Do we have any yeah, other questions? Yeah, that was my problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just reading the... I understand the theory and everything. It's just reading the actual... When it comes to reading it, I don't understand yeah exactly and uh you probably remembered um you probably remember what i said um but you can have a look at the different um sources of information and see which one in terms of its graphics in terms of its table um what helps you understand it because in the end of the day like ed mentioned this is the ocean this is nature and this is our data and interpretation of it so how you interpret that data and how you understand that yourself is you know up to it's your personal you know, preference. So once you find a system that you get and it works for you, then why not? If that helps you understand, okay, this table always seems to make sense to me, then, you know, by all means go for it, you know? Um, yeah. Daniel, I just have a one more information here. Can yeah, go you for see it. that graph here, Tom? Can you see the graphic here? So you imagine uh, this roll over here. Oh, I need to find it, yeah. It's no, it's under here. your it's under your screen. We can't see it. If you, um, you hold it up. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah he's looking at the other screen, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this roll over here, okay. The this uh so here, that part here is the wave. The same amount of volume in the wave we have on top of the uh the line, the water line, they have on the bottom as well. Okay. When they hit the the um, the um, uh, rocks, can you see here, Tom? Yeah, you got it perfect. When they hit, yeah, I can. Yeah, that the rocks wanna uh, uh, restrict the the, the that the, that the roll to coming through. Okay. Yeah. 
So that mass, you got to like uh, push by the rock to up. And then they make it, the, the, the wave it happens. All right? More or less, it's like that's how it happened on the edge of waves. Yep. Yep. And Different adding, yep. sandy banks. Sandy banks, uh, that's why we have a, that wedge waves is a point breaks because in normally we have a, that reference on the rock and the rock is there all the time, 365 days a year. And uh, if it, that it rocks, um, if any, any swell coming, they want to hit that rocks and want to broke in the same spot all the time. Then we can say the direction of the swell or the direction of the wind when affected that, but uh, they want to be there and they want to be predictable. They want to broken that all the time. What's different on a sand bank? For example, sand bank, you, you, one storm or big wave or big swell can move the sand bank around, you know, and then the wave today is a left, then tomorrow is a right. And then um, yep. the same they have a, a little interference of a rip, the rip take that sandy bank and move a little bit more that side or this side, you know? So it's unpredictable. Where it's like a, a point break, you have that prediction because the rocks is still there. Sometimes the rock is a little bit more covered by sand, then make the, the bottle a little bit more uniform and then the wave breaking a little bit more perfect. Sometimes the, the bottle is like a, very un, 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 stay un, uh, even, and then make the wave it broken a little bit more uh, uh, different, okay? But um, the place where they broke is pretty much all the time the same. Just for complement yeah. that, all right? Yeah, Thanks. perfect. Yeah. Um, so uh, what you've just explained there, so when we go to, um, Willamire and the, and the banks move them so those rights and lefts depending on the day and what's happening will move up and down the beach is that yeah. what you're saying yeah, yeah. well and the in and terms of the yeah. actual sand yeah. and the banks under yeah. the water yeah so uh, I didn't touch on it too much but we've also got swell direction so for the most part our yeah. direction yeah. is pretty southwesterly and there's sometimes a few little yeah. variabilities but for us, it's yeah. usually that direction. But when it does change, the sand, of course, is going to move around depending on the power of the wave, the direction of the swell, yeah. what the conditions are like. If it's been like that for many days in a row, you know, the, the sand's always yeah. shifting and moving around. So, so the, uh, the other question I had prior to that, just a quick one there. So tides as well. I know sometimes when we go to Smith's on a low tide in the morning, it can be quite peaky, the wave. Yep. sometimes and Willemar I know Ed said like towards the end of the session it's getting a bit full like too much tide yeah is that in relation to the pitch yeah, of the wave or is it something different that's one that, uh Jamie what's happening yeah. is uh with the tide we have a volume of water on the top of the bank okay so yeah. here and um, let's say here here is the wave. Can you see everyone see here a little bit? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Can you see Daniel? Uh, sorry, uh, here. Yeah, use that but, one, yeah. So this is the wave here. Let's say that the angle here is the borrow and that is the level of the water. If the level yeah. going up, What's happened, the swell, the, the rollo, that rollo here we talked before, they wanna yeah. miss the banking and they wanna end up broken close to the beach because they miss a good part of the bank, okay? Okay, so yeah. Tide, when it's a low tide, the, the, any kind of, or any part of this rollo, the swell, yeah. he hit the, the first bank they found it, so they broke a little bit more behind. Okay, so uh, okay. what happens is when we have a too much water, uh, yeah. the swell missing the bank, so uh, the wave lost that the characteristics or, or the sharpness of the wave. The wave got a little bit too fat because they missed yeah. the, the bank and they pass it free on top of the bank. Okay, that's a roll of thing. Uh, okay. 
We have uh, one more thing about Ulamai. You, you comment before. Uh, Ulamai, yeah. for, um, uh, just for information, Ulamai is not just sandy, okay? A lot of the spots in Ulamai is a rocky bottle as well. So when right. you go there and you see just the sandy, that don't mean there is a beach break. There is a pointy break with a mix of beach break and pointy break. Because we have all that dunes on top of the, the beach, what's happened, the way the, the, the soils come and clean up the dunes and bring it back to the sand and then fill it up the sand so you don't eventually see the rocks. But there are rocks down there as well. Okay, what makes okay. it We have that definition of it. Left and right, and here all the time is a left, here all the time is a, um, a right. What is going a little bit away from our, um, our um, normal conception of a beach break, what the bank is moving around, okay? Just yeah. for complimenting. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so just to add to that as well, um, beach breaks, I think they're often missing, well, for many beginners or people, especially intermediates, they often think, ah, oh, sand, beach break, maybe it's a bit easier or maybe it's not as dangerous and things, but actually beach breaks can be far more complicated to understand because of the variability that we've been mentioning about banks moving, being more affected by, you know, the, the, the shifting sands underneath. So um, where a point break or something that's more rocky, you know, a beginner or something might be a bit more hesitant to go there, but in actuality, the wave tends to be a bit more consistent if it's nearly uniformly rock. So uh, just something to keep in mind of as well, you know, beach breaks can be, the very, um, they can be, you know, fickle, they can be tricky. They, they, they have far more variability, but also, you know, the quality of the wave is there when it works. So, you know, that's, that's, that's all what it is, you know, it's a bit of give, bit of take, it's nature, you know, and we're trying to work around with it. So, yeah, something to keep in mind for beach breaks. Yeah. It is spot on, Daniel. That is a very uh, important. Also, we can actually give you a, a lot of attention for beach breaks because normally if you're going in a point break, you, you know where you look after the dangers. But a beach break, because that's a mutation of the, the bank, you never know where it's the same bank. So when you jump from your board, you can hit it straight away the same bank. And in particular, I have like experienced uh, one of my friends here, the father of uh, Nick Van Dyke. He actually hit his, um, he nearly broke his neck on a beach break, okay, where he surfed big waves like, uh, um, yeah, a lot of big um, point breaks here on the island and he never got hurt. And then he going for a small waves, like normally, to be honest, Big accidents happens on small waves and uh, when we never uh, look for danger, okay? When you get too much relapse, okay? So always is good to keep it that your eyes on uh, attention on where you jump. That's why we so methodic on uh, our safety briefing and we always comment on, 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 uh, on the same bank on that uh, uh, safety briefing because we need to alert people. Oh no, saying this easy is, when you go there, it's a concrete, you know, and you, you can get really hurt. But let's go, Daniel, sorry about. No, nah, no, nah, you're all good, all good. Uh, I just want to open up, did anyone else have any questions? Oh, yeah, I've got a question. Definitely. You can hear me, yeah. I just want to like a real sort of time example because I was looking at the forecast for tomorrow. Uh, yep. It's a big swell and that sort of thing. So I think about like, where would be the best to surf you know like looking yeah, at that okay. forecast mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Um, yeah yeah so what i can do is i might um i'll share my screen and uh we can we can look at the surf forecast all together and uh yeah uh do that so yeah, because it's actually harder to judge when it's really when it's that big the swell you know sometimes it, it's just better to go on a low tide somewhere and yeah, I understand. Uh, so just so you guys know, I'm looking at Coastal Watch here. I did open up um, a few other websites in case, you know, it can be uh, a bit confusing, but I'll, I'll explain what's going on. Can you guys see that all? Whoop. Yeah, we can. We can see it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. As. So 
Uh, yeah, we're looking at the moment at um, Thursday here. Now, this line represents where we are today and uh, we've got tomorrow. So yeah, we've got a significant jump in swell size. So today we're looking at about three to four foot and uh, we're going up to six to eight. You know, it's, it's gonna be, you know, a good size tomorrow. Oh, sorry, just before I move on, I forgot to mention, when we look at um, surf uh, wave heights, um, we need to also keep in mind that sometimes surf forecasting websites, they uh, show the height from buoys or, you know, markers in the ocean and not, it wouldn't actually reflect the true height on a breaking beach. Um, and in turn, that also depends on what beach we're at. So um, if, you know, we all know, well, Smith's is tends to, uh, and, and that area, the protected corners don't receive as much um, height and, and power of the, of the swell as opposed to maybe Woolamai. Um, so just to keep in mind, when we see these heights, we also need to kind of um, accurately reflect them to the beach that we're surfing at too. Uh, sorry, I know it was a little complicated, but I just wanted to make us aware. I forgot to bring that up earlier. Um, yeah, so, to, so yeah, tomorrow you can see the wind here that came through uh, tonight. So that was that big change and then it's going to start dropping off. So we've got mostly uh, westerly for most of the day and it's going to be easing off uh, and pretty much almost northerly change at 5 p.m. or 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, so let's see. We've got a lot of height, uh, well, swell size, sorry, and tides. So we've got high about 7.30 in the morning, low at about midday-ish, and then another high at about 6 or so. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was nearly going to, with that swell size, we would often surf, you know, Cat Bay or um, Shelley's, that sort of area. Um, unfortunately, the wind may still get a little bit into there being, you know, um, westerly. Um, what would you think, Ed, throwing it out to you as well? Well, um, tomorrow we have, for example, three different groups to surf. We have a group on uh, lunchtime. Uh, what they ask is they for change the time, but uh, they cannot change the time because they're a special group. Uh, so lunchtime want to be super low tide. I yeah, like you on right there. A very uh, uh, bad situation because they don't even want to take a day to Shelly's Beach on a low tide. It's not a, a good combination. Yeah, uh, but not the right wind for Smith Beach. What is our um, a normal beach to go, you know? Yeah. Then uh, when uh, when that group pass, they want to be a bit more relaxed because then we're going to, to uh, uh, change the wind, you know? Uh, yeah. To north, quadrant north, and uh, that uh, make a little bit more ease for us on the open beaches. Yeah. And then Jack coming around, yeah, James? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so be like or yeah. Or a film, yeah. The middle of the tide, the tide, the afternoon for um, 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 the late, you know, the late night. Like so, to yeah. three to six o'clock, I guess, wanna be the best time for going. Correct. And yeah. Yeah. go wanna be uh, Smith Beach or even um, Shelley's. Just for you know, today the graphic show like us um, three to four. Um, uh, foot, and that's not uh, represent what we have there today, Daniel. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. why you just talk about and you write on that. So, was this well today? Uh, we have the first lesson today with uh, Joe and um, Alicia, eight o'clock, and have a bit of the waves, but uh, it's not even like that big. Now, Joe and Alicia, you guys there, and um, was a little bit of uh, probably. Two to two foot, maybe, uh, maximum, and then drop you off. Hey, <laughs> drop you <laughs> off in the swell a big time, and then yeah. uh, we we experience again. Um, Alicia, tell me the, the experience of this afternoon a bit. Your your microphone. The microphone no work probably. No, nah, not working. Sorry, we can't no. hear you. The microphone. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Will... No. Put the volume up as well, the volume. 
Um, if I, we'll let them try. <laughs> oh damn. Um, we'll we'll let them try Wait, working away. I think it was a Bluetooth. Ah, oh, there we go. Now? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> nice so oh. tell us what's happened today, Alicia, in the afternoon. We expected like three to four foot in a in a beautiful <laughs> uh, condition, and then we're going there. And Sally's in the water as well. Uh, Leon is supposed to come into us. And uh, we pretty much have a, like a kind of a, a tsunami or a, a, a kind of a, like a, a cyclone. Tell that, please. 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 Early and um, we just deal with that, you know. Uh, we, we like four or five o'clock actually. Um, the change come and um, just move everything, yeah. Yeah, um, if I if I may, um, I'm trying to answer your question, Sally, because you asked about tomorrow. Um, so it's really tricky when it's this sort of condition, especially in the morning. So we've got pretty, we've got Philip Island here. And we've got, um, I'll try doing in red, pretty much a strong west, if not northwesterly wind blowing. So pretty much the whole of Cat Bay, Shelley's Flins, all that sort of side where we would want to surf on the big, big swell. We can't really surf being onshore conditions. Um, so mm -hmm. we would probably want to be looking at the protected corners in terms of wind, like Smith's and um, YCW, for instance. Uh, but like we said, uh, well, we went over the tide is quite low during the day. So uh, your best bet is definitely looking more towards uh, after midday towards the afternoon when the tide's going to start coming up. That wind's going to swing a little bit more from the north. So this direction, meaning offshore, and hopefully it will clean up a little bit there for you. So hopefully, if that answers your question, Sally. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that... Um I just thought penguins would work. Like I, I thought it worked on like when when there's a big swell yeah. and you low tide, you go to like this, that centre crack place. Would that be working tomorrow? You reckon? It is. Uh, uh, you're right on that. Uh, centre crack is like one of our good ways when um, um, the the swell um, is big and it's a low tide, so you search centre crack. Uh, on low tide and you surf it on the corner on that um, the right hand run on top of the rocks on the um, on the high tide yeah as um, like Daniel showing that graphic there uh, it's very interesting you always look for a protected corner so the wind you wanna hit but the, the you have the protection from the heat so if the, the the wind come from that direction, what is what is the, the right spot to go? Santa Crack, um, YCW, uh, Smith Beach, uh, even a surface point. Okay, um, uh, maybe if you're familiar, uh, we can go to Speeds for a little fun. We yeah. <laughs> It's like uh, it's like the way to go. You know, you need to go for that kind of a protection. And my yeah. my my point here, if you're a good surfer or not, you always look for waves. Okay, that's our our big challenge to find the right spot to go. So sometimes yeah. you go in a few spots and you identify the best condition. Is that uh, let's say for example, Shaki. Um, from where I come, I check uh, Cape Lamai, check uh, Surf's Point, I check uh, Smith Beach, and then from Smith Beach, I will check uh, YCW. But it's always good to come in YCW and check from the front, and then I go and check um, um, Shelly's. Uh, Shelly's now um, um, Tentacrack, nah? what is even in Barry's Point sometimes surprise as well. Okay, Barry's yeah. is like. No, yeah. I not uh, suggest Barry in a big swells, but uh, Barry sometimes on that wind in a middle sw a size swell is a good wave uh, on that as well. So normally you check all these points until you decide. And to be honest, the the uh, no very no no difficult to happens 
your first place you shack is the place you need to go, you should go, because <laughs> then you shack too much and you miss the time, you miss the time, yeah. and um, yeah, plus even the interesting. Definitely happened to us, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, um, I was, yeah, I was just focusing on the main beaches, but yeah, of course, the other uh, hidden spots, um, you know, you'll definitely, that's, that's the beauty of Phillip Island is there's so many different beaches at different angles, different, uh, directions that the wind could come from, including the swell size too, that we can surf. So it is actually quite challenging to find a place, uh, that you can't surf, you know, there's usually always a wave that you will be able to have have fun on and at least surf you know uh, i would keep an eye i'm a personally I, I i've i love surfing the far end of ycw so not not the closer towards the car park but the very other end especially when there's a big swell because it starts sort of wrapping in there you've got the headland protecting you and it's and it can be a lot of fun um i wouldn't recommend on the low tide because that that rock there is exposed and can be a bit um, sketchy but uh well with you know keeping in mind you know you might find a wave there if it's a bit too big for um uh, for smiths as well because smiths gets a little bit more energy than ycw at times yeah mm. yeah cool okay um, thanks for that it's just a matter of experimenting but i'm doing but i do a lot of driving around checking yeah <laughs> i want to do less driving around. um <laughs> In case uh, anyone's a little unsure or, or not really understanding um, why, this is a, of course a specific example, but where we've got Smiths or YCW hidden in here in Phillip Island, why the waves don't tend to be as large in here as opposed to the open beaches of Woolamai and Anzacs along here is because mainly our direction of our swell comes from, like I've drawn this arrow here, a very bad arrow, um, southwesterly so when we're looking out at pyramid rock and this headland of phillip island here it actually shelters all this energy from the ocean and makes the beaches here not receive the direct swell um, that's coming from the ocean whereas when you're looking at Woolamai, if i draw a line that's pretty much southwesterly it's receiving the full energy and power of the swell so just help to explain that in case anyone was unsure why that's the case. Um, these protected corners, because of this like little peninsula and pyramid rock in this area, shelters those coves and that and, and bays from the direct swell, and meaning that it doesn't receive the full energy of those waves. Yeah. Daniel, just for a compliment on that, can you see this graph here, everyone? Yeah. yeah. So this is imagine here you have the um, the headland here. Uh, sorry, this part here is the headland, and this swell coming from this direction here. Okay, so the swell wrapping around this headland. Okay, on this way. All right. Yeah. If the swell is coming from this. more straight on yeah the swell coming from this direction here they want to hit the headland in different angle okay that's why sometimes it's a close out sometimes it's uh, uh open uh, more left is sometimes it's more exposed for right depending of the direction uh the swell and depending of the headland or where the swell want to hit Okay, that's is just like a point. So, what then would say about it? Try found the protect points is where the waves want to try wrapping and get a gentle and 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 broken in a nice shape on that specific uh, specific beach where um, they protect from that swell. Then you have the wind. Eh? Wind is a combination. Sometimes what you look for is like wind coming from the land from the land, yeah, to the water, yeah? And that's gonna be our offshore winds. Then when you come in the winds coming from the land, uh, the, the ocean to the land, create that the onshore winds, uh, it's very uh, difficult to have uh, that clean conditions, okay? Perfect. 
Love it. Uh, do we have any other questions, anyone? Yeah, I've just got one on, on what you've just covered. It was really interesting. So that the swell direction is probably just as important or probably as much as the wind. Like when you look on a forecast, yeah? Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're sort of novice looking, you mainly look at the on or offshore, but the swell direction from that note there is probably just as important or if not more important, isn't it, to get your, it, like Ed said, yeah. right, closed out or so, or just yeah. a combination of the both. Yeah, it, it can. Um, I didn't really, uh, because I'm, I'm not trying to get overly complicated, but more or yeah. less our swell does come from one direction. It, it does, of course, oh, okay. have variability. Don't get me wrong, it does change. I'm not saying it's exactly the same. But more or less, you know, we don't get a swell that comes from the north. You know, we don't get a swell, you know, right. that, you know, it doesn't come from the land. It's pretty much always coming from the southwesterly or southerly direction for us, okay? Um, so uh, what I was trying to get to, sorry, I've just done a blank now. Oh, yeah, um, a very specific example where the swell um, direction might be, you know, worth considering is, uh, I don't have a drawn, but I drew this blue line. I don't know if you guys can see up here, kind of trying to show Mornington Peninsula. So when we're looking at Point Leo, um, Shoreham, you know, those beaches on the inside, it actually tends well that if the swell is coming more westerly, so we're looking maybe west, southwesterly direction, that the waves and that energy is able to funnel itself better into the bay because it sort of wraps around um, Flinders and into the bay, you see. So... Um, so sometimes if you see a large swell and it's saying it's west southwesterly and not not very southerly, that could really lend itself to Point Leo and the inside of the bay because the, the energy in that direction kind of lends itself better into Western Port, you see. So you can see those little variability, uh, those variables on specific places. Yes, it does make a difference. Um, but, you know, the more immediate things, Jamie, is like, you know, the wind, yeah. the tide. Those, and uh, Well, of yeah. course, we care yeah. about the size of the wave, but those immediate local things tend overall to have a very direct effect on the, on, on the wave, you know, that we can see in the immediate short, short time, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Just for compliment, quickly, Jamie. Um, normally here on our uh, area here, the swells coming from uh, the west, southwest. Okay, and you can see on the graph pretty much when the weather, the bad weather coming all the time, coming from WA, coming from Adelaide, or all that area, and then they hit uh, our our coastline passing through, you know? And yeah. I lived um, Gold Coast uh, for like seven years. And uh, I luckily live in uh, Kira, like here, around like in one of the best spots. And we waited a long time for all the time, uh, for, for the swells coming all the way through the whole uh, east coast of Australia until hitting there because the swells coming all the way from the south yeah. and hit that area there uh, so for you see how long how far the swell can transit okay uh, that is like a, a south swell okay sometimes there in a specific they they sometimes have the cyclone season for example what they generate the cyclone is a little bit more on the truck on close to the ecuador line and then you had receive a swell from the top of the, the 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 Ecuador line, so sometimes um, and it was um, that is one of the best swells for the Queensland because they have uh, they are on the north area they close to that uh, Ecuador line and uh, this swell pick it up like it's straight when the big waves happen. But all the south swell coming from the the bottom of it, Tasmania pass to Tasmania pass to. Um, um, uh, Victoria, New South Wales, and hit all the way to up Queensland. Uh, far away can go is like 177. Uh, it's a beach on uh, Wagn uh, Agnes Water, where it's like a beach called 177. It's like one of the last uh, surfboard spots on Queensland. So for you see, pretty much close to Lake Muscrab and Lake Elliot Island. Uh, it's like for you see how long, how far it's going up it. 
um, Joseph uh, um, mentioned here. I surfy, um, yeah, but it's not the case because it was uh, originated by a cyclone, but I surf in LA Beach on Whit Sundays, <laughs> okay? And I have a wave there on Hampton Island, what is like um, close uh, inside of the Great Bahir Reef, what have all that board of protection from the Great Bahir Reef, but the swell crossing on top of the Great Bahir Reef and hit the islands inside of the bay, uh, on, the, on the, the other side of the ship channel. So just for you see how swells transit and how, um, yeah, how far they can go. Uh, that's just Amazing. a compliment us here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're definitely very blessed for the swells that we get here in, uh, in Victoria and also, you know, Western Australia because we've just got this open ocean to the southwest of us being, you know, all the way to Antarctica. You know, we've got the polar air that's going in a, from a, you know, blow, from a west to easterly direction, generating those fetch zones, blowing straight towards our coast. So, and then generating the swell heading towards us. So we're definitely blessed with quite consistent um, swell and, and wave energy. So yeah, definitely uh, amazing place to be. <laughs> um, it's kind of cold water. Yeah, well, well, it's worth it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. thanks for that. Good. Yeah. Uh, um, yep. One, one compliment on that map behind you, Daniel. We can yeah. see Kulamai is like an arm going out of the ocean <laughs> yeah. and receive all the swell on that arm. You know, so uh, you can see that's why that's our biggest wave on the island. So we are facing on that uh, on that side, okay. And uh, if you guys go into um, the penguin parade uh, on a big swell and uh, drive your car on that dirt road, what's one of my favorite uh, event? You want to see um, the power of the ocean on that uh, um, uh, coastline, on that specific coastline. What it is like, right the face of the island to the uh, where all the swells hit the island. And then um, Ulama is the one uh, captain more swell because he's an arm inside of the ocean and receive all that southwest swell hit straight on that. It's the same of Kilkanda, for example, okay, and the other side of uh, uh, the lane, uh, the main lane. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, all good. Uh, yeah, look, we're, we're almost, well, pretty much in an hour. Just checking, does anyone else have any other questions? Nope. Going once, <laughs> twice. Oh, I've quick, yeah, got a quick question. Yeah. Go, go um, for it. Go do, for it. Do you know what the angle is of the waves that come, the swell that comes through? If it's offshore at Cat Bay, but what angle that might be that actually might wrap into Cat Bay compared to going on to Flynn's? Ah, uh, remember this one from last time. <laughs> no, this one might be for Eddie. I don't know. You might know this. Yeah. One. Well, we can. We can maybe ask uh, Eddie because I know exactly um, what you mean. Uh, we're, we're referring to Ed uh, how sometimes the swell you'll see maybe shellies or something, and you'll see the swell lines uh, pretty much just wrap around and past Shelley's Beach, and then hit Flynn's or something further down, but not come into the bay. So, if it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Stephen, but you're basically asking what is the best direction for the swell to be to get it into yeah. Shelley's and break there. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see the map behind Daniel there again. Uh, Daniel, oh. <laughs> uh, you can see pretty much uh, if you're going. Uh, can you ride on your wall there in the blue wall? No, <laughs> joking. <laughs> I can ride but on. You, the, yeah. You can see the coastline on flames there. Okay, that's coastline on the flames. And you imagine you have uh, the Western Port uh, entry. Okay. Uh, the, a chip channel on the Western Port. Yeah, that's right there, Daniel. So what's happened is, if this swell pass on an angle, uh, uh, I want to put in my paper here. I can probably explain a bit better. Yeah, go for it. I was I was going to be a shipping channel for you, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here for the. Uh, Okay, let's say, uh, let's 
Pedro. Okay, guys. Yeah. A bit tricky this. I should put in a different colors, but that's what they have here. So here, imagine here, that's not uh, so beautiful like Daniel uh, photo, but here we have uh, uh, island, the island, okay? And here's a Shelly Beach on the island, okay? And let's say that is the other side of the bay, uh, Hastings and uh, um, uh, what's say? Sorry, Steve. Wait, wait. What, what's the beach you asked for? He's asking for Shelly's. Shelly's and the other side? Uh, he was more asking about Shelly's, what the direction okay. of the swell is that wraps so into we, it. Uh, that is the southwest here. And that's the south, sorry. I think I put my S in the wrong side. But that's, that's the fine. south as well here. Okay, here. Uh, this one here is the south southwest swell. And that one here is the south swell. So south swell goes straight here. Imagine that swells coming like in lines like this. Uh, okay. So they suppose it, they wanna hit it a lot of more this area then if you come in from here on that angle here they want to come and pass and they want to hit it beautifully shallies sometimes it's like interesting because even in here sometimes you have a beautiful waves on a uh, on a right point for example and yeah. flings we have a, a crappy waves you know <laughs> And it's just like a matter one one side of the other in the bay, and uh, you already have uh, so much difference. So the direction of the swell uh, combined with the 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 right wind that yeah. uh, that makes difference for that spot. Okay, sometimes it's mess in one side and a beautiful clean another one, and sometimes it's beautiful in both. Sometimes it's beautiful in, uh, in one and mess in the other. Thank you. Um, so yes, it's like a part of um, um, it's because of the restriction, the lane restriction, and the track of the swell inside the bay. Imagine this one here is uh, we're talking about one deep channel here, okay? All the big ships coming here, it's not like a, a so this this channel they come in and uh, the swell all hit on that way. All hit on that way, okay. More often, they can come from different points, but that's the, the more often. And then what happens is, if it's a high tide, if it's a high tide, the swell transit a bit more free with more pressure, okay, because they go inside the lane, the 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 um, the bait, bring by the the, the tide as well. If it's a low tide, the swells trans, uh, um, transit a little bit more slow because they have the restriction of the, the tide, you know? Uh, the tide's going out and uh, uh, slow down the swell. That's why sometimes after the high tide on Shelly's or Catch Bay or, 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 or Right Point or whatever, that's why sometimes the swells drop um, a lot or, or the interval between the sets um, um, get a bigger because the swell take it longer to transit that state. Okay. Right. Thanks. More or less uh, yeah. what I can help for you, but uh, yeah, I can yeah. help, yeah. help I, uh, on that. I got another map there for you, Stephen. <laughs> um, so, uh, look, just to boil it down, I don't have the exact answer, but I would believe the more westerly you've got, the probably more yep. direct it is to come into Shelley's, okay? okay? That being said, like what I said earlier, that the swell can sometimes wrap around a headland and a body of water, that maybe a southerly swell might actually sort of hit the knobbies and maybe even wrap around that point as well. But Look, if I had to give you an answer, I think if there's a little bit more westerly, it's more likely yep. to um, go past and sneak its way in and, you know, even then wrap a little bit into Shelley. So 
Um, yeah. Hopefully that sort of answers your question on the direction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, great work. Thank you. No worries. Thanks. Good, Steve. Good, Steve, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, so just uh, last chance. Any last questions? Otherwise, we'll probably wrap it up now. Uh, just just a quick one. So, so forecast-wise, there's a few different um, yeah. sites there, uh, Daniel. What, what, what's your sort of, your, you know, what's your... Yeah. This was a big point of discussion last time. Uh, look, personally, I, I, I enjoy using Coastal Watch, um, being that I yeah. find it's um, it's UI, so it's interface quite um, user-friendly. It's quite easy to read and understand. I get the tide, yeah. I get the wind, and I get the swell all in like a nice line, and I can help you know sort of work out what's happening at any, at any given time. Um, that being said, um, I have seen uh, websites like Surf Forecast, for instance, be very detailed. So if you want to perhaps look a little yeah. bit more at primary and secondary swells, along with very specific information for a any given beach, it seems to have more direct information for, you know, if you want to look at Surfies Point, if you want to look at Flynn's, you know, they seem to make it yeah. a bit more yeah. specific. So personally, I've found it better just to get the general snapshot of what's going on and then interpret take that information myself. Um, but if you feel more comfortable having a more direct information for each beach, I would say probably um, surf forecast would be better. Um, and also I found uh, Willy Weather. So that website tends to lend itself very well for wind forecasting. I don't look at it for much else, um, but if I'm looking at winds just to get a second um, uh, forecast website just to sort of get what's going on. I find it very uh, effective um, to look at. It also has a lot of um, real time observations and helps you get a good idea of what's going on and in real time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah James, Thanks for that. Just for a compliment on that, uh, we have a, like a, a lot of uh, websites, uh, good websites, websites coming. Um, um, uh, you know, before um, early and um, the ones coming in later, and they always improve and they always, uh, but the, the font is pretty much one, okay? It's like the, it's a satellite um, um, point checkings and uh, data they sending and they doing uh, predictions on that data. That's how they can working on advance like one, two, two weeks pretty much these days. What yeah. my suggestion is, if you have a, um, a one website, you start to get uh, used to, you start to get uh, familiar with, uh, I, I expect to stick with that, and you start to understand for what you listen, what you see, and what you have. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's three different things, all right? And then, just for finalize, like, um, guys, we are super lucky to have all these um, <laughs> informations these days, okay? Because I remember when I am start, like, uh, we need to walk with the good guys. The guys understand how reading the things and uh, pretty much was the fisherman's every... <laughs> okay, I want to look in there. And uh, we need to look. Uh, we need to look for the sky and see the, that clouds come. That cloud coming like from far away, and uh, what that cloud means. And then we need to looking for like oh, three days of a good south. Uh, wanna be uh, wanna be a swell. Uh, okay. And we looking for like uh, um, the oh, this wind is coming on my window. Uh, the the wind direction is that or oh, that wind that um, uh, tree moving. That's the, the the wind direction. So these days we have all these uh, facilities. Uh, thanks to these guys, who study a lot and put all that technology to us. We are super lucky. Okay, and uh, it's great, Daniel. Um, push that uh, button for us. Uh, I love it to see Daniel how how good you prepare yourself and uh, uh, your knowledge as well. It's great to see that. Uh, it's great to see everyone in, um, interesting as well. Everyone listening and participate because 
uh, swell prediction is part of your life, okay? You want to surf the best wave. You want to go there and find the best uh, surf conditions for you in that day. And uh, these days we are all working and have uh, like our tidy uh, lives. So we need to optimize our time on the beach as well. We don't want to go there and surf in crappy waves, you know? So that's why that's coming from. So you understand the swell um, conditions. You, you understand where you can find the best wave and you go there on that specific time. And with, uh, like Daniel said, uh, yourself prepare for, um, for the waves, uh, your equipment uh, adequate for that conditions. Uh, and your self uh, experience, your self knowledge, also, uh, or put you all together in a safe environment, and that's where you wanna find that uh, good wave, and and have uh, your best fun. Yeah. Here, yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah, it's been very, very informative. Thanks you. Thank you both. No Thanks worries, very much. So. Yeah, that's it. You know, we're trying to deal with uh, Mother Nature, and you know, she doesn't really care if we want to have a good wave or not, you know, it's just whatever that, that she offers, you know, and we have to sort of work around, work around her and what's, what's, what the ocean provides. So uh, yeah, I hope that all helps you out. Uh, we'll probably wrap up now and uh, leave you guys to unite. Thank you very much for participating and being here with us tonight. It means honestly a lot to talk about surf forecasting with such a great bunch of people. <laughs> I love this stuff. Um, Please feel free to throw, if any any uh, any questions come later on, um, feel free to throw um, direct message or on the WhatsApp group, whatever. Happy to answer later on and see if I can help you where then, you know, whatever you might have. So, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Stay safe and until next time. Goodbye. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Thank, thank you. Daniel. <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. guys. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Joe and uh, Alicia and all the crew in the house. Thank you, uh, Tom. Yeah. Uh, this is here. Say goodbye, Riff. Riff in his new pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. All right. I'll see you. Thanks, Thanks again. Bye. Very good. Very good to see you guys all together. You are a big part of my big family. Okay, and then as well. Uh, all right, Biggie, thank you, Danny, for organizing that and uh, make sure um, uh, we all appreciate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.